I would be afraid that I would just tackle what I would call so the guitar player. But I knew I know too much, right? I can finish up, I can write a bridge that we're talking about half. But what I really need to do is listen to the part I've got and let the music tell me what comes next. So I'm now there's gotta be it's like telling a story. If once you said there was a little boy lost in the woods, this story is not gonna happen in the desert, right? There's something you gotta pay attention to what you said so far so that it leads you to the next place. Now, what amounts to being led to the next place is where our own musical experience, our own imaginations, all that stuff comes in. I'll show you one that, uh, does somebody else play my tune, uh, Central City Choir? You heard that one? Okay, great, new tune, all right. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is how I think of tunes too. Uh, Central City is the uh, county seat in Muhlenberg County. And they may have a brochure about their events for our funding. That's where Bro Travis is from. And um, I couldn't find my brochure, and so I asked Becky, I said, so Becky, I said, have you seen my Central City Flyer? Never mind, because that's a good title. I wasn't about to worry, worry. I quit worrying about that brochure. I'm like, man, what a great title. It's this little town, you know, with a town square. And to me, the Central City Flyer felt like an express train like ripping through this little town. As a matter of fact, for being up there, I do know that the trains are a big deal because that's kind of cold country, which means the train would have traveled between Chicago and New Orleans. Not express trains, but you know, freight trains. So the Central City Flyer had done trains and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and uh, at the time, I was working on uh, an exercise. This is the kind of thing I do all the time. You guys know how to play the scale, right? <laughs> You know, I'm harmonizing the thirds. And so I was doing that and trying to keep time with my thumb. So that in whatever key I'm in, I can keep time and harmonize the melody of thirds. I go with sixth and thirds and I do it in different keys. Uh, this goes back to my accordion days when my teacher showed me how to do all this stuff. So, Central City Choir bound for New Orleans. So it's a tune. Train's up. That's a, that train, you know, busting up to get out. Pretty literal, isn't it? It's like a little movie. <laughs> songwriters maybe a dozen of them gather at somebody's house and they play songs. This is my newest song I'm working on. And this one guy said, uh, I've got a song with a chorus and a verse and I'm not sure how the second verse goes, but I'm in a room full of talented writers. I'm thinking if I sing the first verse and the chorus that you guys will inspire me to know what the second verse is. So he sings the verse and the chorus and he goes, and he stops and he gets a paper and he says, I'll be back next week. <laughs> so what he had done is he had trusted the music and the setting and the inspiration. He committed himself to hearing what the rest of the song sounded like. That's so powerful in trusting your intuition kind of moment, you know? So I thought, oh. I said, I've got to have to. So I played half of Central City Flyer. And when I did, I thought I, it, it came to me what the rest of the deal was. When you hear the train in the movies, everything goes up by minor thirds. That's the train in an old movie that's going across the country. Whether 
it's cartoons or westerns or love stories or whatever, that's that's the train thing, it's minor thirds. So I thought, oh, okay, so I came up with this. Now I've got E in the bass, which is to say, right now it sounds like the five chord in the key of A, and I'm kind of harmonizing the scale. All right, D. That's a kind of a tension pending thing. Satisfactorily to complete the tune. Um, you can be your own judge whether I did it right. I feel really good about how I did it. <laughs> and I think that's the thing. You've got to remember to be your own yardstick about your own creativity. It's really important to kind of trust over time that you've, you've thought about this long enough, you care enough about it, that you trust your approach and your instinct uh, over some weeks, you know. The other one that I thought of was when Tommy said, I think this was still talking about Lewis and Clark, and he came up with the middle section finally, and then he decided to start the tune with the middle section. And I've done that. Um, the, uh, um, you for instance, you could play, I to do the Tennessee Waltz. And when you do that, people will say, oh, I know what they, oh, it's the Tennessee Waltz. They won't recognize it because you didn't hit them with the melody right up front. So this is a way you can do so. So, um, I'm going to go to France and uh, back in whenever that was. And Chad had gone the year before to Marcel Gaudi's festival. And he wasn't going to go this year. And so I said, Well, how about you show me something? I can show the French guys to get a little gift you know, from you. He said, Yeah, that's a good idea. He said, I wrote this tune last night. I said, Whoa, that's a gift. <laughs> so he started to play uh, Happy Again. <laughs> he had written it the night before. Wow. And uh, he couldn't remember it. <clears throat> so he calls home, sweetheart, there's a cassette player on the kitchen table. Did you, did you turn that on? Oh, 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 oh. He hadn't played that last night. Oh, okay, thanks. So he showed me. Uh, and uh, he played about two thirds of the way through it and said, and so forth. <laughs> and, uh, and I was trying to, I have a cassette, I need to digitize this and get it up on my Kumar channel uh, because it's really great. You can hear him trying to remember the song, me trying to catch up with him, and him saying, Come on, John, you said you wanted to be a guitar player. Because <laughs> he was always the teasing insult thing, you know. And it's one of those things, he did this with Tommy and several other of us too. He was reluctant to do that around people. He wasn't sure about because he was worried that somebody would go, oh my goodness, Chad Atkins insulted me or Chad Atkins doesn't like. But he and I could tease each other like that. And I, I don't know how that quite happened. I think it was him, not me. Uh, because growing up, he was my pedestal guy, you know. Uh, and to think that I would ever tickle him or clown around with him did not seem nervous, uh, but it was. So I learned the tune and then I thought, and he also told me the story of how he wrote the song, which was yesterday, the day he had written the tune, he'd gone to visit the doctor and he'd gotten a good report, a follow-up visit on cancer. And his cancer is undetectable at this point. So he was happy again. So I thought, well, what he did though, he just played happy again, right? It's like, you hear the words. I asked him, are there words? Well, there could be, he said. You know. So what I did is I took the bridge and kind of played it slow so there would be something up in front of being happy again. So there's a, a preamble to happy again. So his bridge is... I've done is I've kept 
captured the transition. He didn't play for me that day, but it was in his story. So this thing that Thomas said, I tell stories without words. And he said, uh, bing, bing, bing. I've never said that. Well, I've mean, heard him say it, but I mean, that's what we do. Uh, anyhow, those two things is kind of my takeaway from that session uh, yesterday. I'm sure you guys had other takeaways. Uh, but that to me, is that's when I'm hearing something like that. That's how I'm harvesting ideas and thoughts and preparing my own play. Let me ask you this. How many of you guys uh, write your own tunes? All right. How many of you do the arrangements of existing tunes? Yeah. So see, this, everything I've just said is plays into that, doesn't it? You know? And what happens is we've each got uh, the ways that we get inspired to write, but also we've got a, a suitcase full of things we've done in the past that might work again. You know, licks that we've saved, or we did this in this key, <coughs> like working that key. Kind of thing. I've got a ton of that stuff. And then the other thing I know, uh, and this is something I'll say a lot, is if I'm working on something new and it's easy to play, I'm worried. I feel like it's not new. I need to come up with something that's got uh, a little hiccup in it somewhere that's a challenge. Well, in fact, in the uh, Bridge to Central City Flyer, I did. And when I got to this, same thing in a different key, I had to go head scratch, head scratch, head scratch, oh yeah. So now I know I'm really following the music and not the history of my fingers because there's something new and challenging about it is. So if you're doing your own work every now and then, try some of these things, especially look for that spot where your, eye, your brain has got an idea that your fingers can't execute yet. Those are delicious moments, believe me. That's, that's a seed being planted, water. You know, so. Anyhow. <clears throat> So I did some handouts uh, with you guys, and one of them, I did, actually three of them, is um, about my accompaniment with, uh, to uh, How Deep Is Your Love? And um, I've had everything I see people on YouTube, they write it out, this is what John's playing, and it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think there's several reasons for that. Uh, one is, uh, I've said, players look at me all the time, they say, what chord is that? Where'd you learn those chords? The chords I play are mostly the ones that are in the Melvin well, book, taken apart and reassembled, or pieces of chords, you know, that I need. To, to, I don't want to overplay my left hand. I want to keep just what I need so that my left hand facility is there. My son, the songwriter, uh, said one of his friends asked him, so your dad's that guitar player, isn't he? You know, he said, what's the best thing you ever learned from you? And he said, I told him, Dad, don't play the whole chord. <laughs> and if you don't commit to this, then all you need is that. Yes? Absolutely. Matter of fact, if, if you back up a second, then, uh, most of you guys know a piece of my history, which is, uh, as a kid, short pants, I'm playing the accordion. 11 years old, I buy a ukulele and I start listening to West Hall. I hear Chet Atkins when I was about 13 and I buy a guitar. I also bought a turntable to go with my LP because I realized our record player would play 33s. But I was, I was hooked. Now I'm learning to thumb pick long into the day when I'm finally able to buy the Gretsch or the Orno, you know. Uh, and by the time I'm in high school, I can play. And so on like that, you know. Um, and I'm also, by that time, I can play some of these things. I get in the high school jazz band, and there's a guy, there's only one other guitar player in my whole school, and he knows a lot more than I do. So I'm not the guitar player, I become the bass player. So now that you listen to how deep is your love, you'll hear. And there again, the line itself, but also the fact that that can sustain while everything else is, is in motion. So the uh, guitar playing and the bass player becomes the person who goes to college and gets told, you can't major in music because we don't think the guitar is a real instrument. Oh no. So I major in uh, physics and mathematics. So there's a decade during which I am not a professional guitar player. I'm a research scientist on one of the Texas instruments. Who starts looking at his watch at two o'clock in the afternoon to see if I can home play the guitar again. For any of you here who have like the day job and you can't wait to get home, 
thing. That's me for a decade. So and during that time, you know, I am as serious as I can be about playing. So I really know what it feels like to be an adult who is serious about guitar, but is not doing it professionally. There's a whole decade like that. Then our son is born, and Beck and I have a conversation about what we're doing with our lives, and I leave that job and I decide to be a guitar player professionally. So I start practicing because I is about groceries now, right? <laughs> and uh, about that time, the classic guitar scene pops up in Dallas. I lose my thumb pick. I go to nylon strings, and lo and behold, Christopher Clark and Amy, the Romero family, and all these people start coming to Dallas because it's a real hotbed. So I'm in like this class right here. If this is Christopher Clark and up here, and that's me out there, that's how I'm learning from seeing the real stuff up close without a thumb pick, but also already having lots of moves. Uh, flashback. So I was, I'm 28 at that time, so it's probably 70, 70s when I left, 1970s when I left. And that's when the classical music was kind of taken. And that's when I started. Oh. And I really got serious for a little detour in my plan. So here's me at age 30. Huh. See if I remember this. <laughs> Don't have this phone up. Okay. This is a Bach Fugue. Thank <laughs> you. 
So I could do that. In fact, the first time I met uh, Becky, I took her to the movies. Uh, that was smooth operator. I've got my hand up here. And there's a song. I remember the song is the He says, I know what you're doing. Whoa, whoa. If we're in a theater, you don't shout out, I know what you're doing. <laughs> but they haven't slowed that yet. So she says, You're playing with the guitar on my shoulder. That's the melody, isn't it? She hadn't known very long, but she spotted it. Steering wheel, my steering wheel is worn out with fingerprints, melodies. So when I don't have a guitar in my hand, I'm still thinking about this stuff. Here I am now, and I've met Chad Atkins, and I don't put my thumb thing back on, but I started moving back into that kind of music again. And he's very intrigued by the idea that I play with classical technique, but that I know his tunes. And that's how come I end up writing the books that I play Chet's stuff. So, uh, and then I met Lenny Bro because Chet, he came to town and said, get out of here, John, Lenny Bro was in the office. And Lenny would hang out, he would show me things, he would answer any question I had. And so he said, uh, hey man, I want to show you a game I play with myself, a challenge I give myself. And he played a C chord, yeah. and he played the A minor seven, and then he played the D minor seven, and then he played the G seven. He said, it's like a melt A chord, you know? And he said, man, you know, it's like blue moon, like one, six, two, five. So he knew one, six, two, five, and he knew that's the blue moon progression. He says, the challenge is, he said, I keep changing the top note of every chord when I play the progression. And I do it by playing up the scale. So here's the C, C, the C scale, he said. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn the noodle white on for a second. I want you guys to try this so you see. It's not just an idea, I want you to see how I got there. So we're going to go C chord and C on top. Now what we're going to do is we're going to play the A minor 7.
Ruby John, you haven't seen me be silly, here's what it sounds like. I say, so what can I put up in front of disco? Meaning an intro. But that's not the way I ask myself the question. I said, what comes before disco? And I said, oh, do what? <laughs> so what I thought about was uh, Lenny's Challenge. And I thought, what if I play uh, the Blue Moon Chords that you hear a do what player play, which would be E, C sharp minor, and then instead of the two minor, you would play an A. Stay tuned. Right now. So now I wrote out also. Um, oh, have you seen uh, the YouTube of Tommy and I playing this early on? Uh, and we're at his house, and I said, I think I've got an intro for How Deep Is Your Love. He said, Don't show me, let's make a video. So that video is me showing him this, and him said, Oh, we just keep playing it. How deep is your love? And we hadn't really ever heard the whole thing yet, but now we've glued my intro onto our alleged version. Uh, it's, it's the YouTube video. If you did uh, Tommy and John, how deep, you probably find it on YouTube real quick. And uh, another thing I didn't do when we did that is uh, my ending was just me kind of playing some stuff. I wasn't, I wasn't ready for Tommy to jump off the cliff. I should have known. <laughs> And um, so I just got to the end and I just moved. But now I know another trick of mine when I'm arranging. Did you hear me when we were doing Central City Choir? I was singing one line of lyrics that had the title. 
simple city planner. That's something I learned from Chet, which is when you play an instrumental, make sure people can hear the title. What he meant by that, hear what part they would sing, because then they'll know what you're doing. He said, and you need to know the words because you may not think it's important, but that's probably all they know. They don't know the chorus or the, you know, that kind of stuff. They know the words. So make sure they can hear the words. So I, my new ending for it now is how do you do? And it's just a pentatonic scale. But pairs of notes. something up front. So my intro has inspired him to come up with something. So when you heard us play the other night, Tommy's got the first four, I've got the next four, which is this, and then we play it, and then I put the tag I just showed you. And on my, uh, uh, in the hand that I gave you is two ways to play along with what Tommy and I do. One way is to play the block chords. Uh, Touch. 
It also has a lot to do with how I make the melody have a different voice uh, than the accompaniment. Uh, when I was playing with Pat Bergerson the other day, my fingers are doing this, it's all flesh, and I'm kind of sideways on the string, and I'm letting go of the note. Notice how I can hang on to the bass note and let it go with the other chord. Each one of my fingers is a separate guy over here, so this is... these two fingers, I'm actually letting them touch each other, but my ring finger is going to swing on its own, so it, and I'm going to use more nails, so. Here's the bass player, the rhythm guitar player, the rush is right. You know, some of that, when I play, I don't think I'm a guitar player. I think I'm a band. Tommy was saying he's a band and a singer. Sometimes I think I'm a choir. Sometimes I think I'm an organ. Sometimes I'm the New York Philharmonic. I've never been in the, uh, the New York Yankees, but uh, <laughs> maybe that's who you are. <laughs> yes? When we spoke yesterday, you said you wanted to talk about Barcelona. Yes! There it is. We're talking about how we write tunes, you know. Tommy talked about uh, where he came from Lewis and Clark, you know. So here's a combination of using a word uh, when I was in Spain for six weeks, Barcelona was a city I didn't visit. And so um, after I got home, I saw all the great architecture, the museums, the paintings, that's where it all was. I'd been up north um, in Sonia with one of the stone. And um, so I, I kind of thought Barcelona of all this, you know. So I'm thinking of that word, Barcelona, and the O, if you say it, Barcelona is where the accent is. So if you think of it musically, Barca is pickup, and O is downbeat, Barcelona. Now I'll tell you another song that does that is Desperado, right? right? Same number of syllables, third syllable, downbeat. Desperado, that's where the downbeat is, Barcelona. So now I go back to uh, Lenny's challenge, and I decide that what Barcelona needs is a chromatic scale. Barcelona. It really takes you to a harmonically ambiguous place, right? And then what I did is, I thought, what if I went down chromatically? Well, so, I, and actually, I didn't quite do that. I did this. So my chords are. But when you put it together, it's. So much to be grateful for, so much work to do, so much music uh, to be played. Um, so anyhow, that, I mean, that, yes? Do you still have goals? I mean, is there something that you haven't done yet that you still want to do? Like me, I get up every morning, you know, I want to do something like that. 
I think the goals are uh, are similar to create. That's why Barcelona is kind of interesting to me. Uh, I also am really thinking in uh, legacy mode right now. I want to make sure that what I've seen is documented for the next generation. Uh, the things called quarterly I was doing because that was me being a teacher and I had access to uh, Chad and Jerry or Lenny. That's my own idea. That's what's the class of the talk. And I was just trying to get that out there. So that's one of the things that's still murked in was I did 40 issues of that and then stopped. Uh, then the next thing, the buffet is more about legacy. I so I want to make sure, especially young kids, but for right now you guys can be young kids, right? Because you're and, and I think, you know, what well, Luper's video B, that was a legacy moment for me. It was great for me to hear Tom and Seth tell the stories. It makes it rich again, you know. It reminds me, there was one point in one of the sessions when Tom was sitting here and he said, and Chuck was sitting right over here, and I swear I could see it. This is all very real to me, and at some point it's going to be the stories. Uh, so I'm trying to document the stories with the music that follows the world. So teaching you what I've learned, but also telling you how I got it. I'd say the legacy thing is, is a big deal for me. And I don't, I don't see a legacy thing as like my last for the glory. No, that's just that's what I'm doing right now. You know, I mean someday it won't be over, but it ain't over yet. So makes sense. Yeah, John, has your Creativity slowed down. I mean, I, it seems like you guys just continue to write in, into later later ages, where you look at some of these rock bands. It's like a muscle. <laughs> if you work it, it gets better. I mean, <laughs> and I'll tell you, the pandemic has actually shifted okay. my creativity because I haven't been able to go out there and play for you guys and interact. Right. So different things go through my mind, and uh, so you got to slow down one bit on the creativity. Yeah. yeah. And so, but you know, so some things go south, and some things get better. So I have felt more like working and more like creativity, and I've been bummed by not being in a room like this. It's great to be here today in this hotel. Doing this. Anyhow, I think that they're going to serve us a, a sandwich or something. Maybe it'll be as good as shrimp and rich again. Hey, listen, thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, guys.